Hello everyone, Dr. Christopher Mitchell here, also known as Kerr Martian, back with another video about the TI Innovator system. So in my last video, you saw me unbox the TI Innovator Hub, a new device that TI released that makes it easy to connect electronics to your TI graphing calculator, specifically the TI-84 Plus CE and the TI Inspire CX. As I mentioned in that video, this is a concept that has been popular in the hobbyist community for a long time, including the article library that lets you connect Arduino devices to your TI graphing calculator. But TI has packaged this in a way that makes it friendly for the classroom, being able to have this kind of self-contained box that has LEDs, a buzzer that makes sound, a light sensor inside a box, as well as connections that you can use to connect electronic components on a breadboard to the Innovator Hub, all controlled via your graphing calculator. Today, I want to show you the TI Innovator breadboard pack, and I want to unbox that for you, show you some of the things that are inside it, and run a couple of little experiments with what you can do with the components inside here. TI has a group of activities that they've put together that you can use with this Innovator breadboard pack, but we'll just do a little bit of experimentation today, and I'll leave going through those activities to you. I must also note, being an electrical engineer myself, that although this is a nicely self-contained group of components, and if you are a new person to this, if you're a beginner at this, then this is a nice way to get all the components, that everything inside here is also components that you can purchase separately and just put together yourself, potentially for less money than the kit costs. However, you do also get the convenience of just getting everything in one self-contained package this way, and you know that you'll have all the components that you need to work with the activities they've already put together. So up to you whether you want to go the convenience route or the economy route. Probably depends on whether you're a teacher or a hobbyist. If you're a hobbyist, you may want to try doing a little bit more experimentation on your own. So let's give this a look-see. I'll take the sleeve off. TI Innovator System. This is the same as the box that the Innovator Hub itself comes in. And I'm just going to move my calculator to the side there for a second so we can take a look inside. So we have a nice little packing list here, as well as a warranty. I'm going to put that aside for a second. Let's focus on this packing list. So inside we have a bunch of different things. I'm not going to go through everything one by one, but one of the most important things we have in here is a breadboard. This is a nice little breadboard. It is, I'm going to take it out of its little bag here. You can see that I haven't actually opened this up before. I've glanced in the box before, but I haven't unbox this is exactly. So this is a half length breadboard. If you'll excuse me while I look in my room, I'm sure I have a regular length breadboard somewhere else. I'm just going to drop that right there for you to look at. Alrighty. Here is a full length breadboard. This is the one that has my um, DCC controller. So this is a circuit that lets you con control N scale model trains with a TI graphing calculator using the article library I just mentioned. You can see that this is roughly half the length of this breadboard that the TI kit contains. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Roughly double the length of what the TI kit contains. So the nice thing about this being a clear breadboard is you can see clearly that there are metal rows that go through this breadboard. Each set of five pins here is connected in a row to each other, but not to all the other pins on the breadboard. You can also see that each of these horizontal rows across the breadboard, the ones with the red line and the blue line are all connected together. So normally what you do is you lay out your components in this area of the breadboard, and then you connect the red lines to positive and the blue lines to negative to provide power for whatever components you've put in the rest of the breadboard. Now, putting that aside for a second, let's see what else we have in here. We have male and female jumper cables for breadboards. That would be these right here. I'll just gently peel off this label here so we can look inside. Well, I say gently. So what we have here are pins that we can use to connect both between rows and columns of this breadboard, as well as to this little connector that says breadboard BB on the end of our TI Innovator Hub. And you can see most of these pins have little, most of these wires, excuse me, have little pins at both ends. These are called male pins. They're the ones with the pokey outy metal bits. And you can plug those into the breadboard or plug them into this breadboard connector. Some of these have a male pin on one end and a female pin on the other end. Those are useful for connecting to anything that already has a pin on it. One of the most useful things you can do with that is if you take the cover off of this TI Innovator Hub, which I recommend you try if you are an advanced user, there are little pokey outy pins that are soldered into the onto this uh, launch pad board that can control a lot more I.O. pins that are a lot more I.O. pins that can control a lot more sensors and components than just the 
roughly 20 pins that are here. This is 10 control pins, and then uh, this looks like 8 ground pins, a 3.3 volt power pin, and a 5 volt power pin. So that is one option if you want to connect to the actual pins on that launch pad in there. Just put these away for a second. Actually, let me keep out two of these so that we can control something with our nice little launch pad here. Uh, I would like to use, hmm, I would like to use red and black. I'll use white and black for now. I'll use the black for ground and the white for hot. All right, so we have, I'll pull these apart too. So we have two little wires here that we're gonna use. I'll put these away for now. Now let's see what else we have in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna control an LED on a breadboard once we finish looking through these components. So we also have, uh, let's see, STMEAC MOSFETs. All right, so we have a MOSFET and a temperature sensor in this bag. We have a variety of different LEDs somewhere in here. We have switches and a potentiometer. A potentiometer is a variable resistor that you twist to change the uh, resistance of. We have a seven segment display. That's like the little red displays that you'd see in a clock radio, as well as a motor. That'll be a fun thing to play with at some point. On the other side, we have capacitors, three different capacitors, presumably with values that correspond to activities in the TI activities. Although if you end up striking out on your own to create your own circuits, you'll definitely need more different um, capacity uh, values, excuse me, of capacitors than those. We have some big half watt resistors here in five different var values. And we have 10 of each of those different resistors. According to the sheet here, we have 100 ohms, 1K ohms, 10K ohms, 100K ohms, and 10 mega ohms. Uh, I will need a current limiting resistor for the circuit that I'm gonna make, and I'm going to use 100 ohm resistors for that. I normally use 330 ohm resistors for something like this. And the closest therefore is 100 ohms. So let's take a look and find our 100 ohm resistors. I'll have to use my knowledge of resistor color codes for this. If you do not know resistor color codes, I suggest that you find a reference sheet. The resistor color code is quite handy. Not yet. So this is brown, black, brown. This means one, zero, and then one zero, a single zero after that number. So this is one, zero, zero. This is 100 ohms. So we'll need one of these. Other resistors here include, for example, this is brown, black, yellow, which is one, zero, followed by four zeros, which is 10,000 ohms. That would be our 10K ohm resistors, and so on. Yes. Sorry, just double checking my math there. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We also have LEDs. We have uh, a red LED, a green LED, uh, sorry, five, green LEDs, 10 red LEDs, and two RGB LEDs. If you looked at my previous video, you'll have seen that there's a red, green, blue LED already built into the Innovator Hub. This is additional LEDs you can work with. We have a diode, a thermistor, a light sensor, and an IR receiver and transmitter. And there's a nice little battery box in here if you want to put batteries in this box and attach power to your breadboard. So let me take one of these resistors out. If I can figure out how to open this little packet here. There we go. And I'm also going to need a resistor, uh, sorry, an LED, which I neglected to get. So now I have one 100K resistor. And I'm going to do the neat thing while I get an LED out and put the resistors back with the resistors so I can find them easily next time. Now let's get an LED out. Let's see what kind of LEDs we have in here. We know we have red and green. I'm going to grab a green LED, I think, if I can identify them. They may have clear lenses, which may make it harder. Nope, they do not have clear lenses. That'll make it easier for us. So let's grab one of these. These are interesting little sticky wrap things. All right, one green LED. Close this up again. And what we are going to do, oddly enough, is we are going to make an LED blink. Now, I know that's something we've done before in the last video. I showed you making an LED blink. Same thing in French on the back, by the way. But in this one, we're going to do so on a breadboard. So a bunch of things that we need to do. Let's put that all to the side for now. 
So we have our TI Innovator Hub. We have our calculator. That's great. What we also have now is one breadboard. Here's the breadboard. I'll put it right here. Two wires. We'll need those two. And we have a resistor. This is a 100K, a 100 ohm resistor and an LED. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our little circuit on this breadboard here. So notice that this LED has a short leg and a long leg. The long leg is the positive leg, and we'll need to keep track of that because LEDs don't work if you turn them backwards. I will put this LED in this breadboard. Now I've put the, oops, yes, I have the story around. I've put the long leg to the right side, so that'll be our positive. I'm going to connect this resistor to the long leg as well. I'm just going to put it right in this breadboard like this. Now this may be a little hard to see from your perspective. I'll try to turn it this way to make it a little easier. I put one leg of the resistor in a row by, in a column by itself. I've put the other leg of the resistor and the positive leg of the LED in one single row. So those are essentially connected together now because there's metal uh, pieces that connect the five pins in each of those columns together. So this is all connected together. And then the negative leg of that LED is in the next row over all by itself. So hopefully that you can see that clearly. I'm not sure I was holding that under the camera when I did that. Let me do that again. You can see that the... Uh, pin of the resistor over here is in a column by itself. The other pin of that resistor, as well as the positive leg of the LED, are in the same column being connected together by the metal piece there. And the negative pin of that LED is in a column by itself. Now, we will connect the negative, what we're, what's going to be our negative lead, to the negative leg of that LED by putting it in the same column of the breadboard as it. Now, we're going to take this white wire and connect it to the other end of the circuit, essentially our resistor. So now if we apply five volts to this wire and put this at ground, we will let this LED light up. Now let us power on, there we go. We've powered on our hub by turning the calculator on. Now I'm just going to, without doing anything with any programming, I'm just going to connect ground, which is this little symbol here. It's like a vertical line with three little lines at the end of it. That's the ground symbol. It means zero volts, like the negative end of a battery. We'll connect the black wire into there. Now I'm going to connect this white wire into what says 5V here, which means five volts of power. And you can see what happens is this LED lights up. The reason the LED lights up is because we're now providing five volts across the LED and the resistor. The resistor is dropping the current down, the amount of power of, uh, it's hard to explain without using the word current, but how much electricity is flowing through there um, so that the LED will not burn out or get too hot. Nope, nice and cool. And what we can now do is let the calculator control when that LED is on or off. So I'm going to take this white wire out of 5 volts and we connect it to this little pin here that says 1. What this means is we are now connecting the LED to one of the pins that the calculator can turn on and off. And when it turns it on, it'll make the LED light up. Now let's make a program that will let the calculator actually do so. So I'm going to name this BB for breadboard. And there's an extra step we need to do. In the previous video, you saw that I could just do send and then like set light on to turn an LED on, set light off to turn an LED off. Now we need to tell the innovator hub that we have something connected to that breadboard pin. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to, in our program, tell the hub by a send command, we're going to say, connect, and we're going to spell it correctly, connect LED 1 to BB 1. And we're going to not put a space in there. So it's just BB 1, all one word. So this means connect LED 1 to breadboard pin 1. Now we'll be able to do commands, issue commands with the term LED 1 in them, and it'll know what that means. So what we can do is another send command where we'll say set LED1 on. Now, as before, we can do a wait command. We'll wait one second. We will then send set LED1 off and then do wait one again. And then at the end of the program, we need to, we don't have to, but we should tell the innovator hub that we have disconnected the LED. We haven't, but it'll leave the innovator hub in a good state for the next time we run this program, since we'll have that connect line at the beginning. 
So we'll just say disconnect LED1. So send, whoops, I passed right by it. Dis, whoops, spelling wrong again. Disconnect LED1. And then the program will end. So this is just going to blink hopefully the LED once. Let's give it a try. And I named this BB. There we go. Our LED turned on and then it turned off again. Just once. Now we can put this in a quick loop. We can make it blink 10 times, for instance. So, oops, I am editing the wrong program. Sorry about that. So now I want to put this loop around just this portion of the program where it does send, wait, send, wait, because I want it to repeatedly turn the LED on, turn the LED off. I don't want to repeatedly connect and disconnect the LED. That's something I only need to do once. I only need to connect the LED electronically, telling the, the hub that at the very beginning of the program, and I only need to disconnect the LED at the very end of the program, not repeatedly throughout the program. So I'll do program four X from one to 100, and then I'll put an end one to 10, excuse me. So what this means is it'll loop through this loop 10 times. It'll start with X equals one. The next time it'll go through X will equal two x equal 3, x equal 4, x equal 5, all, up, all the way up to x equals 10, and then the loop will end. In fact, to make this even clearer, I will display x in here so we can see on the screen which iteration it's at. So 1, off, 2, off, 3, off, etc. And it'll keep doing this up to 10. While it's doing that, I will wrap up this video. So I've shown you something very, very simple you can do with the TI Innovator breadboard pack that comes that you can purchase with the TI Innovator Hub. As I said, you can either choose to get this if you'd like to do the activities that TI provides that you can explore the STEM activities for the Innovator Hub, then these make it very easy to do so because they contain everything you'll need for these and for many other activities, including some that I hope to design myself that will hopefully be available. If you would like to do some experimentation on your own, I also recommend that you consider getting a breadboard a lot of these connection wires and various components to yourself. If you have any questions about that, you are welcome to post in the comments of this video, or I particularly recommend that you post on the Chemitech forum at Chemitech, C-E-M-E-T-E-C-H dot net. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the TI Innovator Hub, about the breadboard pack, or about what you can do with connecting electronics to your calculator, feel free to ask. I hope you will consider subscribing if you'd like to see my future videos around graphing calculators, electronics, and even trains and gaming, all of which I enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next video.